are on Hartness Road, um, just uh, uh, down from Lowry Drug. Uh, we've been there at this location for about 35 years. Wow. The same location. Same location. Wow. I've, I have uh, just celebrated our 40th uh, year of being in business. Well, congratulations. Oh, Thank you. Cow. Thank you. You don't even look that old. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, so we've been doing it a while. We have a, an associate with us now, uh, Dr. Stephanie Werner. Um, uh, she grew up in Statesville. She was trained at Chapel Hill and then did a pediatric residency at, at, uh, in, at the University of Kentucky. So we're very happy to have her. Um, uh, ours is pediatric dentistry, um, um, which is a, a, a range of one to – 18. Okay. Let, so, let's, uh, Doc, let, let's talk a little bit about the business of dentistry. You know, so many people, that they see these professions and they forget, you got to make a living. I mean, you want to take care of your, your, of, of your patients, but you got to make a living, and you've been doing this for a long time. What has changed on the business side of, of your industry, or, or has something changed over the years? Um, because it is such a unique industry that um, they see you as this true, genuine professional, but they don't see you as a business person. Can you talk a little bit about that? And that's a problem, I think, in, in uh, medicine in general uh, and dentistry in general. Uh, uh, your training does not uh, uh, encompass a whole lot of the business part of, of, of that. So. Mm-hmm. It's a kind of learn by the seat of your pants as you uh, as you practice. Um, as far as changes in dentistry are concerned, I think it probably relates to um, the involvement of, of insurance and the involvement of any third party uh, system. It could it be Medicaid? It could be insurance. Um, um, uh, as everybody in in medicine has seen, uh, this adds a new dimension uh, uh, to uh, how you manage the practice. You you have to uh, have the ability to understand the insurance industry. You have to have the ability to understand their payment systems, and uh, you have to understand that. Uh, uh, there are a lot of people out there that need this coverage, do not have this coverage, and we're every day trying to find ways to connect people to uh, uh, programs that will allow their children to be seen in, in this environment. You know, Wayne and I, uh, we, we've got a small business advisory group that we put together, and we had a dentist that was uh, part of the group, and we advised the dentist for years. And one of the things that surprised me, I don't know about you, Wayne, but it surprised me was productivity was such an important conversation with a dentist um, and I never give that any thought because when I go into the dentist uh, I don't feel rushed I don't feel that I'm being pushed out although I'm ready to leave as soon as I get there <laughs> but 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 the productivity of the service you provide is very important um, because that's part of you've only got so much time in the day and you have to understand uh, where um, uh, how that fits um, in, in pediatric dentistry. Uh, unlike general dentistry, um, our uh, our appointments are usually shorter in nature. Uh, children, thank goodness, don't have as complicated um, uh, issues as uh, adults do. Uh, so managing that uh, productivity, if you will, managing those appointments is a, is a very important part of that. The other side of that with pediatric dentistry is that um, every child, it's not a generic issue. You know, you can be scheduled for an appointment with your dentist uh, for a procedure that is, uh, would be the same thing that Wayne would have. Uh, but uh, uh, Sally and John doing the same thing will be completely different because of their level of acceptance, their level of anxiety, their experience previously. So, uh, we, yeah, because I'm going to be crying. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's, there's no <laughs> doubt about right. that. Yeah, I heard you tell the story <laughs> earlier this morning. <laughs> what made you want to get into pediatric dentistry? Well, I had out of college. I uh, taught school for a few years and coached, and uh, it. Uh, I think that was what sparked my interest in in working with children. So that when I decided to go back to dental school, that was always kind of the forefront of my interest, and uh, UNC had a really, really strong pediatric program, so mm. it just fit well mm. for, for me to evolve into that. Great, great. So yeah. let, let's let's dig in a little bit on this program that um, you're titling Celebrate Toddler Day. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the program itself. 
Toddler Day for our office uh, was created to um, um, bring in young children, younger than perhaps uh, the traditional age at which you would be taking a child for their first dental visit. The Academy of Pediatric Medicine and the Academy of Pediatric Dentistry now recommends an age one visit for young children. The reason they do is that there has been an uptick, an upsurge in early childhood cavities, a tremendous upsurge in this. Because there's more candy that is chewable. (laughs) There's more candy. (laughs) It's delicious. (laughs) uh, And as a matter of fact, from uh, uh, this is from the uh, American Academy of Pediatric Medicine, Early childhood cavities is the number one chronic disease affecting young children. Hmm. Early childhood cavities is is five times more common than asthma, seven times more common than hay fever. And, of course, tooth pain keeps children from school and very distracted from learning. So the idea of creating a toddler day to get children into a pediatric dental office early is to it is mainly an educational tool. It is to uh, to work with parents and let them know those stumbling box blocks that are out there that could cause early childhood caries. And we see it every day that we work. And we and if we could have gotten to some of these parents earlier and talked to them about what causes these problems early, then they're preventable. And let me just say this as a guy that has hor- had horrible experiences young uh, with, with a dentist. If the parents would bring the children in when there's not a problem, exactly. make them feel comfortable with you, you know, and it's no big deal. Open your mouth. Let me look in. Hey, things look great. And go. And so it doesn't seem like this bad guy the next time we actually have to go back and do something. It makes a big difference instead of wait till I got a toothache and now um, all of a sudden I'm going to get this. This uh, mean, nasty man to give me a shot, you know. <laughs> well, I, I, I see at this event you're going to have balloons and T-shirts and all sorts of uh, well, all sorts of things. Well, we so want sure it to that. be a, a little bit of a celebration of of oral health, mm-hmm. and 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 uh, we have there was a, a program created by the UNC Department of Pediatric Dentistry called Baby Oral Health, if you will. And we have been, we are a sponsor of that, and it's an educational tool. There are, there are materials that we use to speak with parents and, and teach them on, on these visits what these problems are. One of the primary problems, and you see this every day, is that the children using sippy cups. Now, if a sippy cup, my children are too old to have used sippy cups. They are in their 30s. But if, if a child was, is only hydrating with a sippy cup full of water, there is never a problem. But the sippy cup invariably has a juice or a sweet tea or a sports drink mm. or a soda associated with it. And so now we have a, a problem. A sippy cup with a sports drink in it? Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. We have a problem that is, is a real severe problem because that is, a, that is the key to starting early childhood cavities Hmm. is bathing these these teeth in a liquid that is full of sugar interesting so uh the the date is uh uh, i'm seeing two dates here i'm seeing december the 7th and then january 25th right right so what what do people do uh if they want to be part of this what they just need to, to call our office okay give them the number 704 872 6534 704-872-6534. 704-872-6534. And so they would just set an appointment. Right. How long would should they expect it for this to take place? I would you know we spend probably an average of 45 minutes with every parent when they're there. Uh, again, we're not doing anything else. We're not scheduling any other treatment periods. Uh, this is all devoted just to those children and the parents who are coming on that day. And a lot of times and I, I like this even better when both parents come. Because it's, it's Cause this is really for the parents. It's, it's, oh, it, <laughs> without a doubt, it's, it, yeah. as I said, it's a, it's really an educational too. We we do see children who who will come in. We see young children who are referred to us by our pediatricians who are fourteen, fifteen, eighteen months old that do already have caries, active cavities, and the pediatrician has seen them. So, wow! Yes, I know that's surprising, but we see it every week. The pediatricians see it every week. So this is why this program 
of getting kids in early, teaching parents what those pitfalls are is so, so very important for, for early childhood oral health. Very interesting. So any of you parents out there listening, 704-872-6534. Do you have a website as well they can go to? Yeah, Dentistry for Young People. Com. Toddler Day, Dentistry for Young People, both December 7th and January 25th. Is that right? That's right. Hey, Doc, thanks for being with us today. Thank you guys so much for having me. Hope you have a great day.